In this week's session, we're basically going to be continuing what we were looking at last week, so that's lists. And um, then about halfway through the session, we're going to stop on those exercises from last week and move on to looking at dictionaries, which are pretty similar to lists. And I'll explain what those are later. So just a minor logistics point. So we've got sessions running this week, next week, and in theory in week seven. But the week seven one might have to get moved because it turns out that most of the volunteers aren't available. Um, and I'm quite keen to get somebody that's actually a machine learning researcher and expert in the field in to do the machine learning session at the very end. So it may all be that that gets rescheduled into eighth week or maybe even into Trinity. We're not sure yet. But any changes to that will be posted on the Facebook page. And just as a reminder, I'll flash this up again in a moment because you're going to need to go there to go to the exercises again. This has all of the exercises on and um, all of the information that I'm saying during the sessions, along with uh, screen recordings of all of the previous sessions. Uh, is there anyone in this room that doesn't have Python installed on their computer? Okay. So I'm just going to go over a quick refresher of what we saw last week. Um, so we looked at lists, and lists are a way of storing li literally just a list of Python values. So until last week, we'd only seen strings, which are pieces of text, and numbers. And lists allow us to um, create a list of those that we can then iterate through or randomly access, so you can get element i of this list, or you can get the length of a list, for example. Just, just to remind you, I was calling lists x's, so that's xs, because it's just the, the plural of x. We, ha we can put multiple x in this list. Um, so for example, I, I could just create a list that looks like this. OK, um, so this is just a list of two strings. And then if we want to iterate through every element in the list, so that's to go through the first element and the second element and the third element, we can use a for loop. So we just write 4x in x's. And then we can just print x, say. So if I, um, I'm just going to save this and run it. OK, so we, we see that we get those three values printed out. And it's not super important what goes in here. I'm, I'm just showing you as a reminder of what we saw last week. So I'm, I'm just going to comment out this code that I had already. And uh, you'll recall that you write a comment by um, prefix, prefixing it with a hash symbol. So it's just like this. And then when the line goes red, because there's a, a hash symbol at the beginning, Python just ignores the line completely. So that's not code. That's just a, a piece of text. And usually programmers use comments to remind themselves of something um, or to document their code in some way. So I'm just going to yeah, get rid of that. Uh, sorry. Um, OK, so then we, we had a look at lists of numbers. So for example, say I've got a new list, so just call it Ys, and let's just say it contains these numbers. And we wanted to see how we could add up all of the numbers in the list. And we had to kind of create a variable for keeping the total of the list. So let's just call that total. And initially, we have to set the total of the list to be 0. Then, as before, we just go through every element in the list. So uh, for y in y's, um, and we add that element onto the total. So that so total becomes total plus y. Okay, and then if I now print total, I really can't type today, and run this program, we see it prints out the total of the list. So. Writing code like this is pretty reasonable. But what if I have another list that I want to work out the total to? So say I had a list up here called Zs, and Zs contains some other completely arbitrary elements. Um, I could then just go and just change Zs in that for loop there. So Y is instead replaced with Zs. But what if I then want to you know, have both of those in the same program? Do I have to have two copies of that for loop? That's pretty wasteful. Um, so we store instead that we could write functions. Um, I can write a function called sum. So you'll recall that to define a function, you have to use the def keyword. And then we're going to say that sum takes a list, and we'll call that list y's just in this case. And then we need to put these three lines inside the sum function. So I'm just going to indent that again. 
And you'll recall that um, on Windows, you can select all the, all the lines and just press tab, and it'll stick them all in. And on Mac, it's command and right curly brace. And then finally, we can just return total from this function. So then what we can do is if we want to do the sum of y's, we can write this. And then if we want to do the sum of z's, we can do this. So then if I run this, uh, run this program, we see that it firstly outputs the sum of y's. So it executes this line at the bottom first. Then it goes inside the sum function and executes the code there and then returns from the sum function when it sees the return keyword. And it does exactly the same thing for z's. This process is called abstraction because we're taking a piece of code with one list or one value or whatever and putting it inside a function so that we can use it with a whole variety of values. And that turns out to be really convenient. So as we moved through the exercises last week, we also saw how you could write a function for computing the product. Um, if you've got a list of strings, you want to add all the strings together, for example. So just before we move on to returning to the exercises, I just want to kind of remind you of the structure of how those exercises work. So if I've got a function like this that I've written already called sum, say, I can then literally just copy it. And um, so this, this was the piece of code that we had for um, the test case for exercise one. So this exercise took a bunch of lists and threw them at your function and just checked whether or not they came out with the right value. So I can, I can replace the sum at the top there with the sum that I've just written. And if I save the file and run this file, then it, it just runs these three tests at the bottom. And just to be entirely clear, you do not need to worry about what the test function does. All it is doing is taking a value or multiple values that um, you want to test against. It gives them to the function that you've written, and then it compares the result of your function with the, with the expected result. So in this case, for example, the sum of the empty list is zero. The sum of the list of one and two is three. And then the sum of range 10, which is the list of 0, 1, 2, through 9, um, is 45. Uh, on the um, GitHub page, uh, this session, if you go to session 3, I know we're in session 4, but the ses session 3 has all of the resources, you'll find the list of exercises that we were looking at last week. And I think I had demoed the first three exercises by the end of the session. So um, if you want to kind of start on the fourth exercise or if you want a bit more help with the first three, that's totally fine. You can just go and grab a volunteer and we'll take a look at those. Um, and then in about half an hour or so, we'll stop and I'm going to introduce dictionaries, which are a new concept that are a bit like lists but allow us to do a little bit more. Um, so just go ahead and have a look at some of the exercises. Hopefully you've all had a chance to do a few more exercises this week. And do people feel they've made a bit more progress this week than they were making last week, broadly? Okay, excellent. So the final thing that we're going to look at today are dictionaries. We, we've thought of lists so far as just kind of um, orders sets of data. So uh, we can go through them and they're always in a fixed order. And uh, the mapping that exists for a list is kind of between numbers and the elements of the list. So I've said about how the, the first element in a list is indexed by zero. And you can kind of view the list as a mapping from uh, positive numbers onto um, or zero onto elements of a list. So for example, we go from zero to something, one to something, two to something, etc. So a dictionary is the same kind of principle, except that we are mapping from anything we like to anything else that we like. So for example, I could create a kind of phone book where I make a map from people's names to their phone numbers, or maybe their names to their email addresses, or their names to their Facebook profile, that kind of thing. So a dictionary is a pretty similar concept in Python to a list. And we're just going to look at um, a few simple use cases. We're going to create another variable um, that we're going to use to store our dictionary inside. I'm just going to call that D to keep it short in this case. And um, so we, to initialize a list, we used square brackets. Um, but to initialize a dictionary, we use curly brackets. So you, you just type this. And all this does is create a completely empty dictionary. Um, so there's no mappings in here. We, we're not, there's no meaning to this. So then we want to introduce a mapping into the dictionary. For example, we could just say, do this. Um, so my name's Thomas, and I'm going to type a load of gibberish here, because you don't need to know my phone number. And this is kind of mapping from my name to my phone number. And then. If I want to get my phone number out of this, 
I can use the same syntax that we were using before. Like, like I was getting the zeroth element of a list, now I'm getting the Thomas element of this dictionary. Let me just write that. So then if I, um, if I run this program, we can see that it prints out the element that I have mapped to. So um, we call the thing on the left-hand side the key, and we call the thing on the right-hand side the value. And the analogy from dictionaries literally comes from the physical things themselves. So in a dictionary, you're mapping from a word to a definition. In Python parlance, we just call that the key to the value. So just like uh, we can with lists, we can also iterate through each element in a dictionary. Uh, let's just say, so Scion is running the other session at the moment, and um, let's just put his number in. And then if we want to go through all of the names, uh, so all of the keys that are in this dictionary, we just write this. So K is standing for key in this case, and D for dictionary. So we can just write another for loop. So this will go through um, all of the keys, so Thomas and Scion, and let's just print them out to start with. And run this. So it gives Thomas and Scion. Um, and then I can say uh, has number. Um, and then we, get, we access the element that K refers to. So that's using the subscript notation again. So initially, K is going to be Thomas. So Thomas has number. And then it goes and looks up the Thomas element in the dictionary. And in this case, it's you know, plus 44, blah, blah, blah. So let's run that and see what happens. And you can see it does that. Um, now, the interesting problem with this is that in some programming languages, and I believe Python, there is no inherent order to the dictionary. So for example, if I had um, switched this around so it's Scion gets inserted first, then Thomas, um, it could still be that we go through, it, go through them in the order Thomas, then Scion. Because um, Python doesn't care if they're kind of like words that are ordered um, in, in dictionary order, for example. Um, it's just that the way that it happens to manage the dictionary in the way that it's stored on the computer. Sure. Um, sorry, in what case? Um, no, because we want to uh, access the dictionary by the key, so Thomas, for example. Whereas I would then have to like access that by one, and then you know check is one Thomas, or maybe I'd go and have to check if zero is Thomas or something. Um, so this, uh, this allows us to map from literally anything that we like. So, so the exercise that um, is on the website for session four is to use dictionaries to count the number of words in a piece of text. So for example, um, you could have a dictionary that contained, um, say, 10 words, and initially set that count to zero. And then when you see a word, one to the count, because you've seen it once. So the idea would be that you could enter any piece of text and then it will tell you which words occur most frequently, for example. So there's both the solution to that um, on the website as well as uh, an explanation of how it works. So you're more than welcome to have a look at that before next week. Um, we probably won't move on to looking at that now because I'm uh, conscious that it's close to 8 o'clock. Uh, so just so you're aware, um, next week we will continue looking at dictionaries and ways that they can be used. And we're also going to have a look at something called stack machines, which will help you understand a bit better about how Python itself works, um, and that should give you kind of a, enough foundation of computer science that you can then go and explore a little more. And uh, at the end of next week's session, um, I'm going to go through a set of maybe five or six different resources that you can look at for more things that you can explore with Python or other programming languages. I know that some of you are scientists and have seen stuff like MATLAB or R as part of your studies, and there's definitely kind of easy paths from Python into those. Uh, and then finally, we will move on to this extra machine learning session, whether it's uh, Thursday in two weeks' time or Thursday in three weeks' time or in Trinity. We, we don't know yet. Um, I still need to organize the scheduling for that. So thank you very much for coming, and I look forward to seeing you again next week.